What's up, guys? This is Juancho. Uh, again, coming with a with a video online. This is a tournament. This is a 3K guaranteed, and this is the early stages of the tournament with blinds 5100. Uh, apparently, there's a 10 ante. Uh, I'm on the big blind in this hand. Um, here again, fantasy poker with the king five off, and uh, this uh, happened just a couple hours ago. Um, let's see, everybody folds to this guy, Francia, and he limps. He limps for a hundred. Fold, small blind fold, I just check my option. Um, I flop trips, this sounds pretty familiar. Uh, this happened in a situation on the first video too, where I flopped trip sevens. And this is actually a, a really interesting hand in terms of the bet sizing, in terms of the betting, and that's why I, I'm putting this video up. Um, first of all, I think I told you guys that I am not a proponent of slow playing, so I'm going to go ahead and bet immediately. And I bet half the pot, kind of see where I'm at. Um, not see where I'm at, I know I have a good hand, more see uh, where my opponent's at. If he has a good hand, if he's going to continue with the hand, raise me, um, fold or call. He calls. The turn is a 7. It's not the best card, actually. Um, you know... Uh, I could actually be beat on this spot pretty easily. Uh, a gut shot gets there, 6-9, six, 6-4, six, uh, pocket 8s, pocket 7s, so obviously. Um, but it's not going to slow me down, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to... I think on this spot, if I'm beat, I think my opponent needs to raise me here. Um, the reason why I say that is because uh, in my opinion, the meat of the pot goes in the turn. So if I don't find out on the turn, I don't get raised, that I'm beat, I mean, unless my opponent is slow playing in position, which is totally possible, we're heads up. But for the most part on this pot, I'm supposed to get raised if I'm beat. And I don't, I get called. And the river ends up being the ace of spades, which is actually a decent card for me because if he was floating me with an ace, if he had, you know, maybe he picked up a flash draw on the turn with the ace of hearts, you know, then he just rivered a top pair and now I can get max value for my hand. The reason why I'm posting this hand is because of this river, okay? So what would we bet on the river that would be optimal? Uh, we're not checking. I'm not afraid of being beat right now. In my opinion, I have the nuts. I know the nuts is pocket fives, but I have the nuts. You know, I have the nuts in the hand heads up. You know, I have uh, I have a better hand than him, and now I'm thinking in my head, okay, what, what am I gonna get for value? Okay, well, I can bet half pot, which is what I've been betting, and, you know, there's a decent chance that he's gonna call that. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if I bet 750, and he calls a 750, then why wouldn't he call a larger bet? You know, I mean, that's kind of a, what I've implemented in my game this last year. I think one of the biggest things that I've implemented in, the ga in my game is getting, extracting max value out of my hands. Max value out of my hands when I have it. I'm not just talking pre-flop with aces. I'm not just talking, I'm talking when you hit the flop, when you feel, when you are certain in your mind that you have a better hand than your opponent. You know, in my opinion, if he is gonna fold 750, or he's gonna call the same thing, then why not shovel in? You know, and this is what is called the polarizing bet. So I'm gonna jam here for 3,900, and I'm totally making an overbet because there's 1,500 in the pot. If he's, if I'm gonna bet 750 and he's gonna fold, then no matter what amount I bet, he's gonna fold anyway. So I might as well just try to extract max value out of my hand. The thing that this bet does, it looks really bluffy too because it looks like maybe I had some sort of six, maybe I had an eight that he can definitely beat, he can definitely beat an eight, and maybe I'm just trying to scare him out uh, when the ace comes, you know, representing the ace, making him fall. Or, you know, this bed is designed to polarize my hand. What I mean by polarizing my hand, polarizing means that now I'm either I either have it or I don't. I either have the nuts or I have complete air. Or I have an eight. Or I have or I just have a six, I miss draw or whatever. And my opponent, now I put him in a very tough spot. Because on this spot, I'm never doing that with an eight or a seven or whatnot. I'm doing that with trip fives, with a full house, or with complete air. Something that completely missed and I have a hand like ten high or nine high. So 
Now he has to decide that, and he decides to hero call me. Now, don't forget that the blinds are 100, so I bet 39 big blinds there. Uh, obviously, he only had 32 big blinds, but still, I, you know, it's a big bet. It's a large bet, it's an over bet. And he calls, and he has pocket jacks. And what I accomplished in this hand is A, I got max value from my hand. V, um, I know that had I bet any amount on the river, he would have called. Clearly, he would have called. So why not get the max value for my hand? Why not just, you know, completely felt the guy or get doubled up, so to say? Um, I, 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 I think that it's really important for you guys to know where you're in the hand at all times. And if you feel that you have the best hand, then get the maximum value for it. That's my opinion, and it's worked really well for me in the last year, and I hope that you guys can implement this to your game. Um, and this ends up being a yeah 8,000 pot, and now I'm on my way to a good start in the tournament, and this guy's gone. So anyway, that's just a little video about uh, polarizing your bets, polarizing your hand to nuts or air. Uh, would I do this with a 9 high on the river, meaning I have nothing? Uh, yeah, I would. I actually would. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm more of a proponent of jamming here with with the nuts or what I would consider to be the nuts in this case. I know that a straight beats me, I know a full house beats me, I know ace five beats me, I know, you know, I understand this, but for me, I, I, I really, really felt strong that, that I had the best hand and, you know, in my mind, I was just gonna do everything possible to get max value out of it. And I think I accomplished that. And I hope you guys are able to do that at the tables as well. And um, maybe you guys can comment and say, hey, I polarized my hand and I got max value for it. And that would actually be really cool. And as we continue to improve, good luck, guys. Good luck at the tables. I hope you guys enjoyed this one.